Hello, Alina. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, welcome back, everyone, for the fourth and final session where we're talking about potty training. Today, we're going to look at uh, some troubleshooting, really. What happens when you've kind of, you think you've done everything right, you've laid the groundwork, and uh, you're still having problems. So uh, a bit of troubleshooting, looking at some issues around regression. Sometimes you might have a child that's um, been potty trained quite successfully for a while, and then it all starts to go wrong again. And then we'll also start um, answering some questions around when to move on or when to start thinking about nighttime dryness or, or stopping using nappies at nighttime. Just to, to kick off then, Alina, um, we talked about troubleshooting and problems I know one of the the big thing that comes up is is, is around poo isn't it poo can be quite problematic when mm. you're potty training so something that we know is very common because we get quite a lot of calls to our helpline about it is children that seem to get the hang of weeing absolutely fine but for some reason they aren't the same with pooing um, and they refuse to do a poo anywhere other than their nappy or they just hold on to it the actual pushing out of the poo into the nappy um just completely scares them and terrifies them it it can be really stressful when this happens because you can have a child that can explain to you show all the signs of being ready for potty training and they know what they need to do and when you say to them don't hold on to your poo it's going to hurt your bottom no mummy I won't but the actual doing of it is just too tricky for them why we think this happens potentially is because if you imagine um actually pushing out a poo is a much more active process something we have to get more involved with rather than just sort of sitting and relaxing and letting go of a wee so we think it could be partly that but also poo is smelly <laughs> by nature of it being poo it's a, the body's waste product um, some children can get frightened that it might splash and the splash is going to make them wet or and actually get scared that it is going to hurt them because um, we're not necessarily saying a child needs to be constipated for this to happen but it might just be that actually um, they've gone a bit of a longer gap between poos and it did hurt them a little bit. So what do we do when something scares us and hurts us? Well, we avoid doing that thing again, don't we? But in a young child's mind, they don't understand that actually that poo really does have to keep coming out because the longer you hold on to it, the more trouble you're going to get your bottom into. So it is very, very common, um, but there is a way through it. And it's sort of counterintuitive really to what, what all the stuff we've been saying about consistency and and going cold turkey on nappies, it is far better to allow a child to have a nappy back on to do a poo or a pair of pants if that's where they're comfortable doing it, okay? That nappy for these children is their sort of security and their comfort. It's what they've been used to using. Um, and for most of these children, you find that actually, if you let them have the nappy back on, they will happily do their poo. And then it's a case of moving them away from that. So you can still keep going with potty training because the minute they've done the poo, what we would encourage is you go back in the, the toilet area if they've not done it in there um, and get them to tip it in the toilet with you and flush it away, all those sorts of things. Um, and also just to say, it isn't just poo, it's more likely that it's going to be poo, but some children get really nervous of letting go of a wee, particularly children when um, maybe they're going somewhere else during the day, like to preschool or to a childminder, they don't want to use a different toilet or they just feel nervous going to the loo away from home. So you can get kids sort of holding on to their wee for hours and hours and hours. And it's something that parents get really worried about. I think the main thing to know is actually it's not going to cause your child long term um, bladder or bowel damage. This holding on to the wee or the poo for these periods. But it is something you want to try and nip in the bud. You know, when you think about us as adults, a lot of us don't like going to the toilet outside the home, do we? Mm. So you can mm. kind of understand why a mm. child might get anxious around a toilet at nursery or mm. uh, in a shop or something. Do you recommend mm. trying to get access to the nursery to see what the toilets are, lo are like there? Or I know it's difficult at the moment, but... Yeah, yeah, that can be really helpful. And you, what we would say um, is to... It, once you're allowed to go into a nursery again is to go in with your child so they can point out to you or just talk to them about it just say you know is the flush a bit different or is there a hand dry you don't like because often or the child might not really even have thought of that until you've asked them or they might just say well no I'm just a bit too scared to ask mm -hmm. um so it's about having open communication with them and with the nursery I mentioned at the beginning of this about 
that kind of situation where you you actually have you've gone through potty training and you, you kind of you think you've sort of nailed it and it's it's gone quite well but you then might get these points in time mightn't you and it might be a, a few weeks later or even a few months after you think you've cracked potty training that all of a mm. sudden the accidents start to to come back again and you feel like maybe you're going backwards a bit um it's called regression isn't it what mm. what can you tell us about that yeah potty training regression it can um it can come on as a complete surprise for people you know that child can be reliably clean and dry as you just said for maybe weeks or months and then for some reason um it's as if they've almost forgotten what they were supposed to be doing and i think it's a it's you know parents shouldn't panic but there's some key things you need to do you just need to check that an underlying um issue like constipation hasn't crept in or that they your child hasn't got a urinary tract infection because both of those things can cause wee and poo accidents so again i would point people in the direction of the eric website have a look at our daytime wetting and our constipation pages just to just to check um so just make sure you under, uh, rule out any kind of physical cause for it then you're looking at kind of the environment around the child sometimes this happens because children have a change in their routine so it may be that actually they, they start at preschool or they're going up to a different um, room at the nursery and the routine is different and it just throws them off kilter and it doesn't take much for sort of it's a bit like the domino effect everything just goes out of the window because you know children don't have accidents because on purpose because they're being lazy or naughty yes they they can be a bit frustrating and and not go when you ask them to but it's very rare that children would deliberately wee and poo just to, to wind us up however much it might feel like that sometimes um but what we do know is once they've started having accidents and they don't know why it happens and they don't really know what they can do about it they will often just clam up and go into denial so you can say to them you've you've had an accident haven't you you've wet your pants and you know because their pants are just sodden no no I haven't um and it is all part of this sort of stress response I think of just of of desperately trying to um to explain it away in some other way and you know some kids they, they regress because um they just sort of forget you know I think there's you can have quite a lot of excitement and fuss about potty training you've done your reward chart and you've done all your cheering and and all that but you know life has to go on doesn't it you can't kind of spend half an hour every morning um cheering Mr Pooh because Mr Pooh's come to play with his friends and the swimming pool and all that um but some children without the sort of some kind of motivation they just sort of you know lose their way with it um often regression happens when they get tired or you know something they're excited about like a new arrival in the family new baby new puppy um they quite fancy being a bit like a baby again um so what, all... what do you do then do you have to go back to the start and start all over again or what yeah I think we well, sort of meet them where they are um in terms of yeah and it's essentially just go back to the basics and do you know, if, if they got to the point where they were independently going off, but they stopped, well, you probably have to do a halfway street of sometimes um, allowing them to do that, but other times reminding them and just kind of get them back on track, really. Look look into their drinking again. Are they still drinking plenty? Um, you know, you know, all the kind of the things that we've talked about, really, getting them involved with cleaning themselves up. Um, you know, put the reward chart back in, make that for just telling you they've had an accident if things have really gone awry and you, you need to just find something um, to engage them with. Um, but yeah, I think it, the main thing to reassure parents with is obviously constipation or a urinary tract infection, you need to go to the doctor to get it sorted out. But potty training regression in itself is incredibly common and usually it isn't due to any underlying reason. It's just for all those, you know, you've got three, four-year-old, two, three, four-year-old who, um, you know, they've they've learned this big thing and they hadn't quite realised it was here to stay now. It's really from five onwards, if children are still having accidents, that's when more sort of medical investigations can happen. Um, but yeah, so, so it's, it's part of it, really. You, you you sort of touched on it. It's, it can be very frustrating, can't it, when, when this happens mm. and very stressful. Do you have any kind of management techniques to help try and take the stress out of that situation a bit because I, I mean it, it can really feel like it's pushing your buttons can't it yeah. when, when this starts to happen yeah. um and you and you just need to keep calm don't you yeah it's not always that easy though is it really and, and it there's a lot of um 
quite a lot of competitive parenting as well, I think, happens. I remember going to a toddler group and looking around and thinking, golly, all the others are potty trained by now and my son still hadn't. Well, he just, he got it. You know, he walked really early. He just took longer to potty train. So children, they learn at different rates and our parenting styles are all different. Um, but I think, yeah, trying to stay calm, trying not to think that your child's doing it on purpose, um, try, I'm trying to avoid getting into a battle of wills with them as well because um, you know, children love attention, don't they? And even if they're getting negative attention for something to do with uh, you know, accidents on the floor or something like that, it, it can just seem like a bit of a fun game to them. So I think just trying to stay as calm as possible, you know, have that break, just go, just give yourselves a break and just go back. If, um, if you really think that actually things aren't going well and they're just not getting it. But with true regression, usually it really doesn't take much to get kids back on track. Um, moving on then to the last area we wanted to cover in this series, and that was about thinking about nighttime dryness. Nighttime dryness isn't really the same as potty training. You can't really train a child to be dry at night. Um, some children will, you know, a few of them will go on to be wet bedwetters um, until they're older, and that's usually due to physical reasons. So once your child has become reliably clean and dry in the day and they've been that way for a couple of months, um, that could be the time to start thinking about taking away nighttime um, nappies or pull-ups. Um, you may also have found that you've had perhaps a couple of mornings where they've woken up dry or just a bit drier, that, that pull-up was just a bit lighter. So what you can do is, um, first thing, is explain to your child what's, what's going to be happening. So again, it all goes back to that kind of giving them fair warning um, because again it's something they've got to learn um, to be doing um, so yeah let's let them know that you're going to ha have a trial without um, nappies or pull-ups get the bed really well protected if they lots of children at that age still have a milky drink close to bedtime um, bring that forward have the milky drink with their tea because if they have it just before they go to bed they're going to bed um, with a nice a full up bladder full of a, of, of a liquid that we know will make them make even more wee in that milk so um just you know they can still have a, a bit of water before they go to bed but just try to avoid big drinks get them to do a wee before they get into bed um leave a potty in the room as well try to make it as easy as possible for them with a night light so you're explaining you know if you wake up in the night and you have that feeling of needing to do a wee just pop out on your potty um or you know give mum or dad a shout and and if they need help you can get them out to the toilet um yeah night light in the room and also um just the sleeping arrangements if they're sharing a room with a sibling and they're in bunks just move the child that you're trying to help get dry at night down into the bottom bunk um because you don't want any further obstacles in the way if they've got to climb down three steps um i think any of us if we knew we were going to bed in a nice nappy and you're all cozy in bed it's easier just to think well i'll just do a wee in here <laughs> So you said though that night nighttime dryness isn't to do with training. What it what is it then that sort of makes your child be ready at night time for them to stop, phys, you know, physically going mm. for a wee in the middle of the night? What, yeah, that, yes, it, it it's to do with the the hormones in our body essentially. So um, nighttime dryness is the final stage of continence that we achieve, and what needs to be happening is either that you have children that might still keep making daytime amounts of wee whilst they're sleeping but they wake up and they need to go or they know they need to go or um their body the hormone that they're releasing it's called vasopressin you're releasing enough of it that it slows down your urine production as you're sleeping so it means you can get through the night um without your bladder getting so full it needs to be emptied and that hormone kicks in for children at all different points um and nobody can kind of say when but for for most children post potty training as a sort of heading towards the age of five and that's why um, bedwetting under the age of five it isn't even considered bedwetting it's just a completely normal part of childhood up to that age but from five it can be treated um yeah up to the age of five it, it's chances are it's just their body just not quite ready to do it and also it's really hard for them to to be able to rouse from sleep to that full bladder signal to get to the toilet but some children will never get dry if if they're always in a nappy um, we know just like the accidents help children in the daytime learn some for some kids waking up in a wet bed is the thing that that triggers their brain to think ah oh, actually I need to wake up at that point or I can just sleep through and not release my wee because I need to wait until the morning 
Um, so it, red wetting is quite complex, quite a lot of different things to it. I don't, you know, it would be bamboozling to go through it all now. But mm. I think the main thing is that there's um, some prep work that you can do, talking to that child about, again, what I said, what, what's expected of them and just having a trial without the nappies. But um, if, you know, if you just have a run of wet nights and you've taken that nappy off, it's fine. They're not ready yet. Just um, go back into the nappies. Better to do that rather than chop and change, sort of have one night in, one night off. And that's going to be quite a mixed message, quite confusing for kids. So, um, so yeah. in, in theory, it sounds like you could then have like your child becomes day dr- dry during the day, say eighteen months, very early. But it could mm. be a couple of years before they then yeah. are ready to to stop wearing nappies at night time. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, and, and it's it's that key thing because they're ready. It's their body. It's not, you know, we we bedwetting happens outside of our conscious control. It's when we're asleep. So. There's a lot of it is the actual physical um, development of a child's body that needs to be happening. For children that are nervous of pooing, let them continue to use their nappy to avoid getting into a cycle of withholding. If the accidents start to creep in after your child has been potty trained for a while, check for constipation and UTIs. Changes in a child's environment, like a new sibling, pet or starting nursery, may have an impact. Don't panic, regression is common and by going back to the basics you should be able to get back on track. Nighttime dryness does not automatically follow on day after daytime dryness and is not considered a medical problem until the age of five. Great. Okay. Well, thanks very much for for running through that, Alina. We're going to head back to our live selves now for a QA and a for everybody who's uh, dialed into this. So thanks for watching and we'll speak to you very shortly.